have chosen to look at Starbucks Coffee as they are a well-established international coffee house chain, operating 24,000 shops in over 70 countries worldwide. As Starbucks sources their raw materials and operate these coffee shops in so many countries, it has an interesting and a complex supply chain. Starbucks opened their first shop in Seattle Pike Marketplace in Washington, March 31st, 1971. Three men formed Starbucks, Gordon Balker, Zev Zygal, Jerry Baldwin. They planned a coffee company based off a roasting technique for coffee beans. The three men that had been inspired to do this by a man named Alfred Pete after he taught them the style of roasting beans. The company took the name Starbucks as a reference from one of the characters in the famous Moby Dick novel. Components that are needed to make a Starbucks coffee include a dishwasher, paper cups and the all-important coffee machine and grinder. The coffee machines that Starbucks use are the Mastrona Super Automatic Espresso Machines. These are produced and made in Switzerland by Fermo Plan AG and are exclusive to Starbucks. The dishwashers used by the company are from Hobart. They are made in Germany and these are quick and simple to use but at the same time they boast a sense of high quality. Starbucks sell around 8.2 million cups of coffee a day. They source these cups from international paper who source their trees from private landowners in the US and they also own forests in Brazil and Russia. The coffee is grinded by the Mastrena which only grinds enough for the amount of cups being made. This keeps the process quick and keeps the coffee as fresh as possible. Starbucks source their coffee from fair trade farms in a variety of countries including Costa Rica and Indonesia. As a company, they work closely with farmers to ensure acceptable working conditions and pay. This helps them improve the social aspect of the sustainability triple bottom line. The milk isn't specifically sourced from particular countries, but it is known that the milk comes from GMO corn fed cows. Starbucks have been under pressure lately from their consumers to start providing organic milk. Starbucks also offer dairy-free alternatives such as almond, coconut and soy milk. They haven't disclosed where they are sourced from either, but they are all Starbucks branded when they arrive in store. Syrups are also another raw material that Starbucks use in some of their speciality coffees. All different flavours are obtained from different places, but many, such as vanilla, come from Costa Rica. Lastly, Starbucks get their sugar from Australia and Brazil. All of these raw materials that I have mentioned, when they arrive in store, are presented in Starbucks branded packaging. As part of their supply chain, Starbucks own green warehouses for their unroasted beans. They own nine regional distribution centres across the world, seven of which are managed by third party logistic companies. They also own 48 central distri distribution centres, all but one of which is a 3PL. Starbucks generally bring coffee beans into the United States and Europe in shipping containers. The unroasted beans are trucked to a warehouse where they are then roasted and packaged. Once roasted and packaged, the product is trucked to large regional distribution centres or smaller central distribution centres. Uh, other Starbucks items such as dairy products, baked goods and paper items like cups and napkins are also stored in these distribution centres. They combine coffee with these other items and make frequent deliveries to the Starbucks stores. Starbucks claim we know our supply chain inside out, bringing you unique, sustainably produced coffee from across the world. Sustainability, uh, sustainability initiatives include recycling and waste reduction, ensuring they continue to reduce waste as an ongoing process, two, energy conservation, being eco-friendly and not spending too much on energy as a business overall, water conservation, using water more efficiently, green building, so resource efficiency, um, climate change, everyone has to make a, uh, an effort to reduce their footprint on the earth, it's great that Starbucks are doing the same thing too, uh, responsibly grown coffee, so no child workers, uh, ethically sourced tea and cocoa, uh, this improves the uh, overall image of the um, organisation within the public eye. Uh, as well as showing support for farmers and the community, it's also very important to have the, um, the support of the local people uh, where the um, business is operating, as well as um, the Ethos Water Fund as well. Uh, Starbucks are making strides to improving their sustainability and footprint across these 10 areas overall. Some of the key challenges in the planning and operation of the supply chain of Starbucks is forecasting the quality of raw materials 
will be challenging as consumption of coffee varies throughout the year. For example, less coffee is consumed throughout the summer. Unforeseen events could also delay the supply chain, ranging from the growth of coffee beans to the day it is processed and delivered to the customer. For example, a natural disaster a slowdown of the delivery of the raw materials. Forecasting sales. Using previous physical data isn't as reliable as the global market is, is interconnected, causing turbulence, which creates a bull whip effect. Coming to the operational side, uh, you know, there needs to be a consistent standardised training throughout all stores, which could be difficult to actually place within all the stores around the, country, around the world. International regulations and agreement have also put back Starbucks as they've had to make an international trade agreement with the World Trade Organization and also local governments and regulations in different countries have put them back as they've had to place different regulations. Starbucks has a few more challenges regarding the, in the operations side regarding the international regulations and agreements. Starbucks had to make an international trade agreement with the World Trade Organization and also the other varying local governments have made regulations throughout their stores and their countries. And the general culture and economic difference in countries affect the you know, different working conditions that Starbucks have to take into consideration and the methods and styles and generally the working life in different countries have to be considered while they're operating in these countries. And another thing is like the regulations is the trading blocks they've had to deal with in regards to the deliveries of raw materials. Done.